Okay, this video is entitled The History of the World Starting September 23rd, 2015. Okay, so right now is, is July 2nd, 2015. And so there's a gap in history that we don't know, and that's what happens between July 2nd, 2015, and September 23rd, 2015. But what I'm going to talk about is, first of all, we already know the history. We already know history. That's what it's called. That's why we call it history. We know what has happened in the past. But what we don't know is what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't even know what's going to happen in the fi next five minutes. We don't even know what's going to happen 30 seconds from now. The future is unknown. But there's certain things in the Bible that, that's very clear. So I'm going to start the history of the world. Here's what the Lord told me. He told me that on September 23rd, 2015, are you ready for this? That the mission is complete. The gospel has been sent to the four corners of the earth. The gospel has gone out to every nation, every language, every tribe, every people. Okay? The gospel is out. <clears throat> According to what the Lord told me, the official date that the Lord has set for to say mission complete is September 23rd. 2015. People are going to look for a dramatic change. Oh, well, I think the rapture's happening on that day. It's not. And you can send me a message. Message me on October 1st or on the 25th of September 2015. <clears throat> Point is, we. let me just give a side note. Anyone who claims to know the day or the hour is a liar because Jesus himself said he doesn't know the day or the hour. Not even the angels, but only the Father. So anybody who claims to know the day or the hour is a liar. And they're preaching false messages. And you shouldn't trust anything else that they say. If they're going to lie to you about that. And basically take Jesus off of the throne. And say Jesus didn't know what he was talking about when he said nobody knows the day or the hour. And there's even some preachers who say that the devil knows. Jesus didn't know, but the devil knows because the devil was able to calculate 6,000 years from some date way back in the day. Whatever. If that was the case, Jesus would have known 2,000 years ago. I'm just saying. Anybody who teaches that they know the day and the hour is lying, and you need to basically not listen to that teaching, and the Bible says many deceivers have gone out. <clears throat> Okay, so what happens after the gospel is preached throughout the earth? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, and now you should get your Bible out and go read the whole chapter 24. Jesus said that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world, and then the end will come. And that's very similar to the sequence of events found in Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 6. And this is something I've been trying to get, I've been trying to get this word out because anyone who teaches that the rapture occurs before the mark of the beast comes out is teaching a false teaching. And if you were to really sit down with them and say show me your bible proof, show me your scriptures, They'll pull, they'll do, they'll have to do a bunch of smoke screen and pull a rabbit out of a hat magic tricks with the Bible. Okay? Because the harvest of the earth, one, Jesus talked about it in the parable of the weeds among the wheat. And that's, <clears throat> you need to look that up. I believe that's in Matthew chapter 13. So two chapters you should read is Matthew 24 and Matthew 13. As a matter of fact, if you're going to read Matthew 24, you might as well read Matthew 25 because we see the, sh the sheeps among the goats and the foolish virgins. That's all speaking of the end times. We see uh, in Matthew 24, Jesus said that, there, that 
that he who endures to the end will be saved? Now, why would Jesus say that? Well, it all relates to what happens in Revelation chapter 14. So if you look at what Jesus said, he said, after the gospel is preached to all the world, then the end will come. And he also said that there would be <clears throat> great trials in those end times as such as never been before and never will be ever again. And he said, if those days had not been cut short, no flesh would survive. <clears throat> so he's talking about the very end of the end times. And he's not talking to some group of people that he's not playing a mystery game. He's being straight out. Okay, he's not. It wouldn't be fair for God to make it that you have to be a Bible scholar and you have to spend years and years in seminary. And basically, what I've seen of people who go to seminary, they go in excited about God and have a relationship with God. They come out and they don't even know, they don't know they're left from right in the Holy Ghost. And they think they know the Bible, and really they've just been indoctrinated. So you're actually better off staying away from any type of seminary or Bible school, but focusing on your relationship and being in love with Jesus. <clears throat> Now, there's an interesting scripture, and I want, I'm want i going to read this real quick. It's um, 2 Timothy 4.3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers who will teach what their itching little ears want to hear. Okay? And then again it says, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. In other words, they don't want to hear the truth. They're going to turn aside to fables. What's a fable? A fable is a fantasy. A fable is a fairy tale. A fable is a story that's kind of based on reality, but it has this happy little ending that makes it something that everybody wants. It's... it's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, it's Cinderella, it's, you know, fantastic, wonderful, but people don't want to hear the truth of God's word, so they're going to turn aside to fables and fairy tales, and they're going to, rather than accept genuine, true teaching from God's word, okay, I'm just saying, so I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about these end times. Now, the Lord told me that as of September 23rd, 2015, first of all, there's peace and safety. Peace, safety, peace. But that comes to an end suddenly. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen on September 23rd or 24th. As a matter of fact, what I'm proclaiming is on that day, the Lord says officially the gospel is out and that mission is complete. That doesn't mean that people aren't going to get saved. What it means is that somebody has been sent to every nation, every language, every tribe, and every people. And so from that point on, Jesus said, then the end will come. And in the book of Revelation chapter 14, starting in verse 6, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and read it. <clears throat> I saw an angel flying in midair with an eternal gospel to tell the inhabitants of the earth to every race, every tribe, and language, and people. He cried out with a mighty voice, Revere God and give him glory and honor and, and praise and worship, for the hour of his judgment has arrived. In other words, this angel was out preaching the gospel and got the gospel out. Okay? And then he says, now the gospel is out, and guess what? The hour of his judgment has come. So what happens after the gospel is preached to all the world? The end comes, just like Jesus said, and the day of his judgment starts. Okay, And I'm proclaiming that we have until September 23rd before that shift happens. Before that shift. Okay, <clears throat> And I believe it's a transitional period. I don't think anything dramatic is going to happen on that day. Okay, but I am saying that we've been in a transitional period ever since ISIS stepped on the scene. If you remember the beheading of James Foley, it was during those days that the Lord showed me that something in the spirit has changed, and it has to do with the fifth seal in Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. 
In other words, the, the fifth seal in Revelation chapter 6, starting in verse 11, the fifth seal, wow, that's, the Lord has just given me that revelation as I'm saying this, because I never really realized it. I knew, the Lord told me that that's come to fruition, that that's, that's the beginning of, the beginning of the number who, of saints who are to be put to death for their faith. Now, we know saints have been put to death for their faith for a long time, okay? But the beginning of that end, of, I'm just saying, when ISIS came on the scene in 2014, <clears throat> some, God did something different in me. And he started waking me up with dreams of thermonuclear war. He started giving me revelation. He started having me repent of a bunch of stuff and come out of a bunch of stuff and do a bunch of stuff differently in my life. Okay? Now, I was always serving God. I love the Lord. I love God. But, but something changed that made me quickening and made me realize, okay, this is it. This is the end. This is coming down. And because we don't live in Iraq and Syria, we think, oh, that's happening way over there. We're safe here in America. And we are. But the Lord says a transition is coming. And that's the type of transition I'm talking about on September 23rd, 2015. We're going to be in the peak of that transition. Okay? I'm proclaiming peace and safety up until that date. And then from that time on, I'm just saying, if you're going to wait to repent, repent now. Get your life right with God now. But if you're going to wait around, don't wait past that day. <laughs> I'm just saying, start getting everything right. Get your house in order. Okay? And like I said, he says, behold, I come as a thief in the night. So there's a bunch of stuff that still has to happen in the earth before the rapture. Okay? <clears throat> so back to Revelation chapter 14. Read along with me. Get your Bible out. So after the gospel is preached to all the earth, then the Bible says, the hour of his judgment has come, and Babylon the Great falls. Okay? After Babylon the Great falls. Listen, what is holding back the mark of the beast? There's a great society, a great government that will not allow the mark of the beast to come forth. But when Babylon the Great falls, the Government to take its place and the society to take the place of Babylon the Great is the society and the government of the Antichrist and the mark of the beast comes out. Now go go ahead and read along with me. After fallen uh, verse 8, chapter Revelation 14, 8, then another angel, a second, followed declaring, fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. And then a third angel followed and said, Whoever pays homage to the beast and his statue and permits the mark of the beast to be put on his forehead or hand, he too shall drink of the wine of God's indignation and wrath. In other words, we see a clear sequence of events here. The gospel is preached in all the world, and then very soon after that mission is complete, the hour of God's judgment comes, Babylon the Great falls, and right after that, the mark of the beast comes out. Now, somebody says, well, we're all going to be raptured up before the mark of the beast. If you're waiting for a rapture, it's not going to happen, but there's going to be many who die on the day that Babylon the Great falls. So, the Bible talks about, um, in Isaiah 57, verse 1, it says, and I can't remember the exact words, but it says something like, the righteous perish. And the Lord actually gave this to me as an end time scripture. And it says people ponder it in their hearts, but, but the Bible says that they perish because the days are evil and God takes them out to spare them from the, from the evil that is to come. And, and in, in, in Isaiah 50 verse 7, it says something like that. And you might need to read two or three different translations. Read the King James, read the NIV, read the Amplified. <clears throat> but basically it says that people, righteous people die early to save them and spare them from the evil that is to come. 
And that's actually a prophecy that I got for this lady one time. Her son had died, and he was a Christian. And I gave her that scripture and said, He possibly died to spare him because maybe in the future he was going to fall away from God. And so God took him out at, at age 18 or 20 before he had that opportunity to fall away and because the Bible says the days are evil. So when Babylon the Great falls, there's going to be a great time of many, many people are going to die on one, basically in one weekend or one three-day period, you know. It's going to be like a holiday weekend. Um, on, on Friday, everybody goes to work. And on Monday, there is no work. And I'm not saying that as prophetically. I'm just saying that it could happen on a Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, there's no... It's all gone. Downtown is gone. I'm just saying, the hour of God's judgment comes. And now when Babylon the Great falls, that's the same event as the sixth seal of Revelation chapter 6, starting in verse 12. And it's also the same event called the Day of the Lord, where Amos says, With a great flash, the fortified city is destroyed. And in Revelation 6, 12, it says, It starts with an earthquake, and it ends with a time of no wind anywhere in the world. Okay? That's the sixth seal from Revelation chapter 6, 12. It's also the day that the hour of God's judgment and the day that Babylon the Great falls. And it's also the day of the Lord that Jesus spoke of. <clears throat> he said, the sky will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Joel spoke of it. He said, the sky will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. In Acts chapter 2, Peter spoke of it, he, and he was quoting Joel. He said, the sky will, he said, blood, fire, and billows of smoke, and the sky will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. And then we see in Revelation chapter 6, when the sixth seal is pulled, the sky is turned to darkness and the moon to blood. But we see more. It starts with an earthquake. Then the sky is turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Then there's late figs falling from the sky, and these late figs come down all at once, many all at once, just like fruit would fall out of a tree when it's shaken by a strong wind. It means a lot come down all at once. These late figs, they're shaped the same shape as a nuclear bomb that was dropped on Japan, and they're late figs, okay, and they all come out of the sky all at once, and then the sky is rolled up like a scroll, okay, that's a mushroom cloud, and people are hiding in the dens of the rocks and hiding in the bomb shelters. So you want to know what the day of the Lord is? It's a nuclear attack. It's a worldwide attack, and it causes, no, at the end of it, there's no wind anywhere in the world. And not only that, but there's two strikes. There's a first strike and a second strike. Believe me, don't believe me now. Believe me when it happens, and in the middle of it, when you're hiding in a cave or in a bomb shelter somewhere, saying, woe is me, for this is the day of the Lord, and what that guy said on YouTube is happening exactly like he said. First, I felt the earth shake, and I was like, what is this? And then on the news, it came up that California has had three nukes, and New York has had three nukes, and... And, and Washington, D.C. is completely gone. And oh my gosh, the day of the Lord. And then within a few hours, you're going to see the smoke and the, the sky will be turned to darkness. Just saying. It's a worldwide event because the Bible says at the very end of it that there's no wind anywhere in the world. Okay, And that's Revelation chapter 7 starting in verse 1. Somebody started the chapter wrong. Revelation 7 verse 1 should be part of Revelation chapter 6, where the sixth seal is pulled, okay? Right after that, the 144,000 are marked with the mark on their forehead. And so that happens in the spirit. You're not going to be able to see it, but there are 144,000 men in this world who serve God. They're celibate like Paul and like John, not like Peter. Peter was married. Peter wouldn't qualify for that, okay? But Paul and John both would have qualified if they were an end-time preacher. But there's 144,000 who will receive a mark. They will have a visitation from an angel. The power of God will come upon them. 
very much like what the Bible says about what happened to Mary when she had the encounter and the angel said, you will be with child. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit came upon her. Next thing she knows, she's pregnant. Same basic thing, but they're going to have a revelation. They're going to feel something burned into their forehead. <clears throat> These are the events that happen after September 23rd, 2014. Now, it could be a year before it happens. It could be six months before it happens. You need to keep your heart right 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So then... Anybody who teaches that the rapture occurs before the mark of the beast comes out is teaching lies. Okay, and here's why. In Re the next thing to happen after Babylon the Great Falls, the Bible says the angel goes out warning people, do not take the mark of the beast, otherwise you're going to hell. Okay, basically. And in verse 11, chapter 14, verse 11, Revelation 14, 11, it talks about basically don't take the mark of the beast. And then in verse 12, it says, this calls for patient endurance. And in the Amplified, it says, here comes in call for the steadfastness of the saints and patience, the endurance of the people of God, those who habitually keep God's commandments and their faith in Jesus. I like the way the NIV says it. It says basically this calls for patient endurance on the part of those who who uh, serve God or, or I can't remember exactly, but it says those who remain faithful to Jesus. In other words, when the mark of the beast comes out, those who serve God are going to have to have patient endurance. And then the next thing it says, blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. So that goes back to Revelation chapter 6 verse 11 where, where, the, Lord, where the Lord is saying... Wait a little longer until the number of saints to be put to death for their faith is complete. So these are the events that happen after the gospel is preached throughout the earth. And I'm saying that that transition day, the official day that God says mission complete, the gospel has been preached, the gospel is out, okay, is September 23rd, 2015. Anybody who says the rapture is going to happen on that day, we'll see, okay, we will see. And when it doesn't happen, you can point to that preacher and say, you're a false preacher, you taught lies, and then you got to disregard everything they've ever said. Because if, they, if you catch them in one thing, I'm just saying. And somebody might say, well, the same thing about you. Yeah, exactly my point. If everything I say comes to pass exactly as I'm saying, then you're going to have to acknowledge that all my teaching is straight up from God's word. I don't get on here and try to teach something. I pray and the Lord drops something on me and I'm minding my own business and he's the one who says, make a video. And I'm the one who says, but Lord, everybody else is teaching something different. And he says, that's why you need to get out there and try to get some people to hear what the Lord is saying. All right, so... <clears throat> After the mark of the beast comes out, it calls for patient endurance. Now, I challenge anyone to find where the harvest of the earth, a.k. rapture, is found anywhere in the Bible. except, And you'll find it in Revelation chapter 14, verse 14, after the mark of the beast comes out. And the only other place you'll find Jesus talking about it is he talks about the weeds among the wheat. And guess what? The harvest of the earth in Revelation 14 goes right along with what he said about the weeds among the wheat because there's two harvests. And the Bible says the, the first harvest, the angel commands, and, and people are taken up. And then it says the second harvest that the angel in charge of the fire gives the command to harvest the earth because the grapes of God's wrath are ripe. And the grapes of God's wrath are, are those are the weeds among the wheat, those are the foolish virgins. Those are the goats. Believe it or not, the goats are taken up in a rapture. But the problem is they're bundled up with the weeds among the wheat and thrown into the fire. That's why the Bible says in Revelation chapter 14, verse 15, 16, 17, 18, that the angel who's in charge of the fire is, is that second harvest. And it goes straight back to what Jesus said about the weeds among the wheat. He says, let them grow up together, and at the harvest, 
then you separate them. And Jesus also talked about the same thing when he talks about in the, the net full of fish. He says, pull the net up and then separate the good fish from the bad fish. And he says, we keep the good fish and the bad fish are thrown out. Revelation chapter 14 goes on to Revelation chapter 15 where we see a scene in heaven and we see God's proverbial barn is full of wheat. In other words, we see the harvest of the earth, the fruit of that God's people in heaven. Okay? Now, where are the goats? Where are the weeds among the wheat? And where are the grapes of God's wrath? They've been trodden in the wine press of God's wrath. And that gives you an idea of how many people are involved in that. 1,600 stadia, a radius of 1,600 stadia, four feet high is how much blood would be. Now you can do your math and do some calculations, find out how many people that would be on average. That's a lot of Christians. Let me just say it that way. That's a lot of weeds among the wheat. That's a lot of goats. Okay. Then Revelation chapter 15 leads into ch Revelation chapter 16. We see who's left on the earth. And the Bible says that those who are left on the earth, that they cursed God. They were, are the people who have taken the mark of the beast. They refuse to repent. And the Bible says that these are the people who shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. And the Bible says that all the waters in the whole world are turned to blood and they are forced to drink blood because God is right in his judgments because they shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. And this is why I got this revelation. I was asking God, who's left behind and is there going to be a big revival and people getting saved after the rapture and after the harvest of the earth? And I left it at that. I said, God, I need to know what's going on with this. And in the night, the Lord woke me up and he said, the only people left on the earth after the harvest of the earth are the most wicked and wicked of wicked people. That's what he said. And he said, after the rapture, a.k.a. harvest of the earth, only wicked, evil people. And, and so I said, okay, Lord, show me in your word. And he showed me this whole sequence of events and how it continues on all the way through chapter 16. So... Revelation 14, 15, and 16 is a sequence of events that all happens in sequence, and it will happen. If we were to go ahead in time right now, we could look back at the sequence of events in the earth starting from September 23rd, 2014. It's all going to play out just as I'm saying right here, starting in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Because many will watch this and just say, I disagree, and click on a different link. Many will watch this and say, no, no, we're going to be raptured. I know that for sure. We're going to be raptured before the mark of the beast comes out. And they're going to disregard what I'm saying. And they're the foolish virgins because they're not going to prepare. They're not going to get their heart right. But they're not going to, listen, God's going to do it the way he says in his word. There's nothing in the Bible that says anything about a rapture before this harvest of the earth in Revelation chapter 14. Okay, so the after so I'm telling you straight up, he who has an ear, let him hear. You should do what I did. You should call out to God and pray and seek the Lord and say, God, is it true that no one after the harvest of the earth gets saved? Nobody gives their life to God and no one repents. The Bible says that all of them, every single person has to drink blood because these are the people who have shed the blood of God's prophets and saints. So after the harvest of the earth in Revelation chapter 14, in verse 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, then we have Revelation chapter 15, okay, and then... uh. In Revelation chapter 16, we see who is on the earth and what's happening on the earth after the rapture, okay? And <clears throat> you're going to have to go ahead and do your own Bible study on it. And if you pray and ask God and say, God, you show me, just like I ask God, what happens after the harvest of the earth? What happens after the rapture? Is there really, listen, just the fact that there's a movie called Left Behind, that is a huge deception, and that should be proof enough that that's not the way it's going to end up. Because the devil, here's what the devil wants everybody to believe. That we're all going to be raptured out before any trial or tribulation 
That way nobody has prepared their heart to be ready for that mark of the beast. When it comes out, the Bible says this calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints and those who remain faithful to Jesus. Why would it say that? And the whole chapter 24 of Matthew, Jesus talks of the end times. He says, he who endures to the end will be saved. The implication of that is he who does not endure to the end <clears throat> is going to hell and will end up taking the mark of the beast. He says there will... He, he, Jesus warned us of those days, and then in Revelation or in Matthew chapter thirteen, he he his account of the weeds among the wheat is very consistent with the account in Revelation chapter fourteen, starting in verse fourteen, with the harvest of the earth. So you take all those scriptures and put them together. There is no other rapture. There is no other harvest of the earth outside of what's written in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 14, from there down, and before that, the mark of the beast comes out. So what I'm saying is, anyone who's teaching that we get raptured out before the mark of the beast comes out is teaching falsehood and lies, and they you need to just take their teaching and throw everything you've learned from that away and get back to only what the Bible says. But like the Bible says, the truth of God's word is true. It is a fable. It is a fantasy. Many are going to turn their ears away. They don't want to hear the true doctrine. They don't want to hear true teaching. They'd rather hear a fable. They'd rather hear a fantasy or a fairy tale that says we all get raptured up before the, har before the harvest of the earth and before the mark of the beast comes out. We all get raptured up. We, nobody has to go through any of those trials. And then... Here's another fable, that after the harvest of the earth, there's going to be a bunch of people in the earth helping and trying to get people saved and preaching the gospel. That's not going to happen either. It's not going to happen. And, and if you, you don't have to believe me now, but I feel sorry for the person who, who thinks it's going to happen the way Hollywood says it's going to happen in the movie Left Behind. Are you stupid or something? You're going to watch a movie that's made by Hollywood and get your doctrine from that? Well, in the movie, Kirk Cameron goes forth and he does mighty works for God. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that, behold, I come as a thief in the night. And if you miss that rapture, if you miss that harvest of the earth, that you are end, going to end up I'm just saying, that's where the wrath of God is poured out, okay? And even those who are raptured up, if their heart's not right with God, if they're not serving God the way they should, they're going to be thrown into the wine press of God's wrath, okay? So I'm just telling you what the Bible says, and if you don't pray about it, and if you don't get your Bible out and study it out, just like I'm saying, and some people will tell you, they'll throw a bunch of scriptures at you and and do all this smoke screen and all this fancy footwork, all these magic tricks with the scriptures. Listen, that is not God. It's just straight up not God. To, to extrapolate some sort of meaning out of a verse and try to imply meaning because you want it to say that, I can understand why people don't want, don't want it to play out the way the Bible says. Because Jesus, in the parable of the sower, he said, the minute persecution arises, they quickly fall away. And so a lot of lukewarm people are saying, I want to be raptured out before the mark of the beast comes out because they know they're going to fall away the minute that mark of the beast comes out. So they're, they've just basically given themselves this foolish fantasy about how the end times are going to play out when the Bible makes it clear the mark of the beast comes out first. And then after the mark of the beast, this calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints. Then many are put to death for their faith. And then he who endures to the end will be saved. And then we who are alive and remain will be raptured. And the harvest of the earth happens. Okay, so... I'm telling you, the Lord's put this on me to get this word out, and you are one of the lucky few if you actually 
see this video and you take it to heart and you pray about it because you need to get oil in your vessel. You need to be so filled with the Holy Spirit that when, when that mark of the beast comes out and they start coming after you like you're an outlaw and trying to find all the Christians and sending them to jails and sending them to prison. Meanwhile, everybody's running scared saying, I thought the rapture was going to happen. And there's people sitting there thinking, the rapture is going to happen any minute. The rapture is going to happen any minute. The rapture is going to happen any minute. And it doesn't. And they're like, but Lord, I thought it was going to, I thought it. And then they get mad at God. You said the rapture's going to happen. And they're going to get mad at God. And the next thing they're going to do is take the mark of the beast so that they can have Isu's bowl of soup. I'm just saying, it's found throughout the Bible. They're going to be hungry. They're going to be tired. They're going to be like, oh. And then they're... The, the, the people who bring out the mark of the beast are going to say, if you sign up for this mark of the beast, you're, all your assets are frozen, but the minute you take that mark of the beast, you're going to be able to walk right back into your house, drive your car, and go straight back to work, and all your money is going to be restored back into your account. In other words, you're, you're going to be sitting there starving, holding out, hoping not, you know, hoping that the rapture will happen. And when it doesn't happen, they're going to say, listen, you're, you might be in a jail cell. And they're going to say, listen, what's your name? Okay, we're going to look up your social security number and we're going to find you and we're going to, we're going to have a, a meeting. They're going to pull you out of your jail cell and they're going to say, listen, according to our records, you have a savings account with $3,500 in it. And you paid off a house five years ago. You paid off your mortgage. That house is vacant right now waiting for you to come home. Not only that, but we're having a pizza party in 15 minutes. And if you just go ahead and have this procedure done, we're going to feed you pizza. We have a shuttle bus that's going to take you and drop you off right in front of your house. And when you go to Walmart, you'll see that they'll tell you what your balance is. You'll see that you have a $3,500 balance. So you can go grocery shopping. As soon as you take this Mark of the Beast, we're going to give you a full pizza meal and drop you off right at home. And within 15 minutes, you can jump in your car, go straight to the Walmart, and buy as many groceries as you want. And for those who hold out, this calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints and those who may remain faithful to Jesus. One person is going to say, I thought the, rep I, I thought the rapture was going to happen by now. All right, fine. And they're going to be mad at God. Put it on there. Another person is going to sit there and say, Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. And he's going to look at the person and say, the longer I hold out, the greater my inheritance and the greater my reward in heaven. All this suffering that I'm going through, I'm going through for Jesus. And I have the patient endurance. And that fire, that oil in your vessel is going to start coming up and bubbling up. I've paid a price for my Lord. I've obeyed God. I've been prepared. And not one thing you can ever do, you're going to have to kill me. Because I'm going to stay steadfast for my Jesus. And every minute of suffering that I go through is suffering for the Lord. And I receive an eternal inheritance for all the trials. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Praise God. And they're going to they're gonna basically usher you back to your jail cell. And when you get back to your jail cell, you're going to be like dancing around. Even though you're hungry. Even though you haven't eaten. Even though you're in a jail cell, you're going to be praising God. Meanwhile, you'll be like, what happened to that guy, that other guy who's a Christian? Oh, he went home. What do you mean he went home? Oh, yeah, he, he's, he, he left. You mean he went home to be with the Lord? No, he went home to his house on 348 Pine Avenue, right, right, you know. You mean he... In other words, yeah, he took the mark of the beast and he's no longer in captivity. He's going back to live his life as usual. Just saying. That's the way it's going to play out. And there's somebody who lives on that address. Maybe if you're lucky enough to watch this. And you go, whoa, he just said my address. 
I almost said the city and state, but I didn't want to miss it because there might be a dozen people who live on Pine in every state, and there might be 15 people who actually find this video and watch it all the way to this spot. And if I had said Pacoima, California, then they would have said, oh, that's not me. No, it is you. If you live on that on that address on Pine Street, doesn't matter what city or state, if you live on that address... If you don't repent and get your heart right with God and start laying your life down and get your your vessel filled with oil, you will end up taking the mark of the beast. And just as Jesus said to Peter, before the sun rises, before the crow even crows three times, you will deny me. Peter said, certainly not I, certainly not I, certainly not I. Luckily for Peter, it wasn't the end times. Luckily for Peter, he had time to repent. And that's why, luckily for you, right now, the mark of the beast hasn't come out. And by when the, the time you see this video, you will have time to repent just like Peter. And that's what this video is all about. Somebody else might be watching this saying, well, I don't live on that address, so it's not for me. Well, that's not wise. That's not what a wise vir virgin would do. The wise would say, okay, I'm a... I'm going to believe God for the best. I'm going to believe God that the rapture is going to happen. But I'm going to prepare for the worst. And I'm going to seek God and put God first and get my vessel filled with oil. All right. So made this same video again in another way. If you watched even this 40 minutes of it and you got actually to the end of this video, I got to say, I hope that you repent and maybe one day, you and I will be cellmates. And I'll be sitting there going, man, this is exactly what I proclaimed years ago. And you'll come walking and be like, yeah, I saw your YouTube video two years ago. And I'll be like, what? I'm just saying. And then we'll pray together and be like, let's stay steadfast and let's wait on the Lord because the day is coming when he's going to say, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth. When we hear that word, let's go ahead and quickly volunteer. That way it'll usher in and cut the days short. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. 